Here's that crank assembly that I recently removed from an old um, Redditch 350 Royal Enfield bullet engine. And um, in the last video that featured it, we saw that it had a total of seven thousandths of an inch run out with, uh, I think there was three thousandths of an inch on one side going in one direction and three or four, I think it was, on the other side going in the opposite direction at the same point of rotation. So that wasn't very good at all. Um, I'd like to say that I got rid of all the run out, but I haven't, but I think I've got it down to a satisfactory level um, since I split the flywheels and uh, lightened them, rebalanced them, fitted a aluminium conrod which I've polished up and it's got a roller big end in it as well. Um, let's give it a spin and uh, take a look. Both clocks reading thousandths of an inch now. And we see on this side, the drive side, We've got no run out at all. That's really good. You couldn't wish for better at all. But on the time inside, we can see there's three thousandths of an inch there on the time inside. But it varies from minimum to maximum at top and bottom dead centres. So with the crank pin at the bottom, we're reading at the highest. And with the crank pin at the top is at the lowest. So it's not a case of the flywheels being sort of twisted out of alignment against each other. Um, it's more, if I can explain, imagine as being at, uh, there we are, at bottom dead centre, we've got the high reading. It's almost as if, if you pinched the flywheels together a little bit because this uh, the main shaft is high at that point but although that would theoretically deal with it the flywheels are running parallel and true to each other so there's either something not 100% with the fit of the main shaft in the flywheel uh, which has probably been like that for a very very long time or it could even be down to wear because um, this main shaft would have run directly in open roller bearings in the main bearing there so uh, and also this part would have run in the bronze bush so there could be a degree of uneven wear on that main shaft which is going to be irrelevant because this is going to be um, sleeved with the inner race of a new needle roller conversion anyway so three thousandths of an inch yeah I would have liked lower but because of it being between top and bottom dead centers there's not a lot I can do about that and I've got absolutely nothing on this side so that really is as good as I'm gonna get with that so um, I'm pretty sure it'll be okay and I'll verify that obviously when I build the engine I'll put it into the main bearings in the crankcases and spin it and check it out I think that's gonna be all right um, if there'd been any movement on this gauge and in the opposite direction to that one I'd have been really concerned but the fact that there's absolutely nothing on this one proves to me that uh, that's as good as I can get this particular crank assembly and I'm sure that it'll work out fine so this one will be going into the engine that will become known as ASBO number 45